Well, this is Tombstone, Arizona, and Tombstone was once an authentic Wild West town. Today, it's more a caricature of an authentic Wild West town. But there is some history here. In fact, one of the most famous gunfights in U.S. history took place in Tombstone, the shootout at the OK Corral. I'm Bailey. Bailey, I'm Sterling. Nice to meet you. What do you do and why are you dressed like this, Bailey? Uh, I'm a gunfighter down in Tombstone at the Oriental Theater and I get paid to wear ridiculous costumes and get killed. <laughs> you were saying that you kind of like wear this, this period attire 24 seven. Why oh, yeah. is that? The reaction it gets from people and it puts you more in the fields of doing the job, you know? Because when you're working a normal job, you go home and put your human clothes on, go about your day, and then when you clock in, you're in your work clothes. But when you live like a gunfighter, it puts you more in the fields of doing your job every day if you're out here in a desert like this, wearing this stuff. Plus, I mean, this is fun. What brought you out to Tombstone? Did you come here specifically because of the history, or were you just rolling through town one day and said, I want to be a gunfighter? I came for the history. The history is fascinating of this town. Where did you live before this? I lived in Idaho and Florida. Idaho was the best place. Florida was the worst place. And what do you think of Tombstone? It's, it's like Disneyland, but you need a gun. So I'm on the way down this road here, Middle March Road, that goes past the Dragoon Mountains. Have you ever been down here? And can you tell me what to expect? Oh, absolutely. It's full of old mines, mining camps, foundations. There's a Chinese camp up there. Probably one of the coolest things you could ever do is go out that way. It's a whole different type of solitude out there. Tombstone is about a half an hour north of Bisbee, where I live in southern Arizona. And we're going to be headed to the north outside of town. We're going to spend the afternoon driving down an old U.S. Cavalry supply route the road known as the, the Middle March Road. And it's gonna turn to dirt pretty quickly and then head over here to the north towards the Dragoon Mountains. So we're about 10 miles in on the Middle March Road now. As you can see, we're getting a lot closer to the Dragoon Mountains. There's a forest road right up here to the left that goes back in on the west side of the mountains here. And it's really beautiful and fun to ride back in that area. In fact, the van is parked back there now because I spent the night there last night. Everybody's out here riding. We've got Jeff over here on his, uh, what do you got here? Yeah, it's a 500 KT KTM. KTM 500 and Steve over here on his KTM. Steve is from Bisbee. Jeff lives down here in Sierra Vista. A couple local riders out sharing the trails today. And I'm going to carry on down Middle March Road here. And this is a short road. It's only another 10 or 15 miles before I get to the other side. But I guarantee you the way I poke around in this little bike and explore some of these side trails, it's going to be sundown before I get back here and call it a day. All right, here we go. Narrow Mountain Road, limited maintenance, next seven miles. But as you can see, this is not a very challenging road, at least at the beginning here. It's just a, a normal dirt road. It does get a little bit rougher and more rugged as we go along. Probably something you'd want to bring a high clearance vehicle on. But there are a couple of roads worth exploring. And we're going to take one of them called China Peak. China Peak is up over here to my left. In fact, you can see the road carved into the side of one of the mountains there, and it goes up and up and up, and it gets up into those mountains, kind of behind that large prominent rock, which is known as Sheep's Head. So this is the turnoff to China Peak, getting a little bit rockier. Gonna get a lot rockier soon, so get a chance to see the Honda 125 in action. Now we're going up a, a little steeper incline. Sometimes I feel like there's a little bit of a, a missing space between first gear and second gear. On some hills it feels a little bit wound out at first gear, but then when I shift into second gear it doesn't quite have the power. 
So I end up just going back to first gear, taking it a little bit slower, just putting up the hill. I'll shift into second now. Yeah, it just feels maybe a little bit underpowered. Back to first gear. It's definitely getting a little rockier here, but no problem. This little bike is a champ. Look at how it just eats up these little rocky imperfections in the road. And I have to say, this bike isn't the most comfortable thing in the world to stand up on the pegs. So I pretty much ride through everything in a seated position, which adds to the um, relaxed feeling, I suppose, that I get from uh, riding on a bike like this. When things get really bumpy, I just raise my butt off the seat so I don't get bounced around too much. That's only when things get really bumpy. And at that point, I'm going pretty slow. All right, this is where things start to get a little bit rocky here. No problem whatsoever. You see, I'm trying to just really pick a nice line through these rocks and avoid the bigger ones. Lots of torque in first gear here, just smoothly chugging along. And should things ever get out of control, I just simply have to put my legs out. The ground is right there beneath my feet. How cool is this? Wow. I think we're gonna encounter some mining ruins and mining structures up here. Yeah, right here. Look at this old foundation here. Well, there we go, right here. There's the hole in the ground, an old mine. Well, that was definitely a mine once upon a time. Well, I know that there's probably a lot of things to see up here if I really poke around and dig into the environment a little bit. But I do have to bear in mind that I'm trying to make it up to the end of this road and then we still have to get back on the Middle March Road because that's what this story is all about. This is just a little side excursion here. A little mountain goat here is chugging along with its nine horsepowers. I'm gonna need all nine of them to get up this section here. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> that would be a handful on a big bike. Wow, looks like it gets pretty steep up here. Oh yeah, come on little girl. Okay. I might have to push. Not today. Not today. I'm gonna just turn it around right here. You can see just how easy it is to turn around. I would have never been able to turn around in that spot on a big motorcycle. I'd still be up there for a long time if I tried to turn around at that spot. All right, here we go. Scooting down the hill. It's pretty rocky here. Okay, that was the first uh, bash plate scrape. Well, I think you can see by now that there's a certain way to ride a little bike like this, not about overpowering any obstacles. It's about just going slow and smooth, trying to pick a good line, and then when the road clears up you can go faster. But this rough stuff here with bigger rocks, you just can't go too fast. You're going to be bottoming out, scraping and bashing your way through, so just go nice and slow and steady. But just because of the nature of how this bike is designed, it's not really comfortable to stand up on the pegs, so you pretty much are riding this kind of stuff in a seated position, so it's, it's interesting, it, you know, it feels very leisurely on the one hand to be seated and yet somewhat adventurous on the other hand to be going over stuff like this, albeit very slowly. Now we're coming back up to this really cool section of the road where it just is carved out of the mountain. Yeah, suddenly it got a lot windier <laughs> on this side of the mountain. 
I'm going to pull over and let this uh, guy pass us here. Ah, oh, this is so cool. I just love this view. Look at those rocks right down there. Isn't this just lovely? What a beautiful day and what a beautiful scene of southwestern desert splendor down below us. The convergence of the Chihuahua and Sonoran Desert and these mountain ranges that you can see in the distance and right in front of us are the Sky Islands, a very unique part of the world. You see how quickly I slowed down there? It's because it got kind of bumpy. You don't want to go flying over that kind of stuff with this little bike. You'll be flying off the edge of this mountain before you know it. All right, I think this is the last rocky section. Dodging rocks, weaving through rocks, threading the needle before we get off the mountain here. Well, here we are up on top of Middlemarch Pass. We've made it to the high point of this trip and it's all downhill from here. But what a great view from up here. Looking over towards the east, you can see the Sulphur Springs Valley. and Beyond that, some distant mountain ranges like the Swiss Helms and the Chiricahuas. But I just thought I would stop here up at the pass before we head downhill. We're gonna be going down towards the town of Pierce. It's an old historic ghost town. I hope you're enjoying this ride over Middlemarch Pass on the Middlemarch Road. As you've seen, it's not a particularly difficult road. I would say that if you're a, a new adventure bike rider, a beginner, this might just be enough for you to go out and do in an afternoon and feel like you've had quite an adventure. If you've got a little experience under your belt, you'll have no problem with this road, generally speaking. Of course, conditions can change because of weather. Bear that in mind. All right, well, you've been riding uh, back and forth on Middlemarch Road all afternoon. And what are you riding? A KTM 1090. A 1090, so that's a big bike compared to what I'm on. What's your opinion of this road? Uh, it's a great road. It's kind of middle middle of the road, you know, for a road. It's not too hard. It's really adventurous, really uh, beautiful, though. Got great views. And you said that you got off the road a little bit, did some extra exploring, some extra yeah. credit. What was that like? I shouldn't have been alone probably when I'm trying to get my 500 pound bike back up right, but I made it. Just had to move some rocks. All right, well, there you go. There's somebody else's perspective on Middle March Road. It's all downhill from here. Well, we're almost out of the mountains now and down to the flat land. Way off in the distance, I can see the Chiricahua Mountains. And we're leaving the Coronado National Forest now. Gonna go through some private land here on our way to Pierce. There's an interesting sign up here I wanna show you guys. I get a kick out of it every time I drive by. Well, I think I just came up with the name for this video, maybe even a whole new series of videos it's called Going Nowhere. Well, 
All right, we're coming into Pierce, Arizona now. This is a really small, old gold mining town. Gold was discovered here in 1895. There's not a lot here. The cool old general store is up here on the right. The old jail is over here on the left. Look at that. Got the old metal door right there. This is the old general store that I was telling you about. Sign out front says it's for sale. Just in case anyone watching this wants to buy an old general store in Pierce, Arizona. And why not? I bought a motel in Southern Arizona. I never uh, dreamed that I would do something like that. And yet here I am living the life of my dreams, riding around going nowhere. Going nowhere. I like the sound of that. It sounds kind of unambitious. That's what it feels like to go on these little adventures on a small motorcycle, go ride all day and end up back where I started in the beginning of the day, going nowhere. Would you watch a series about a YouTuber riding a little motorcycle around all day and ending up in the same place where he started? Making no progress at all, but enjoying the day nonetheless, taking time to discover things along the way, a slower paced journey like today. I think we've went about 25 miles so far today. <laughs> we gotta make it to Tombstone before the sun goes down. That sounds like something from a movie. How did you like that? The old grab and snatch. We're going south on the Ghost Town Road. They call it the Ghost Town Road because there's a few different ghost towns along this road. You just saw the first one, Pierce. There's another one up here called Cortland. And then there's Gleason. So three different ghost towns. And if you don't want to buy the old general store at Pierce, I think you can buy the entire ghost town in Cortland. It's for sale. And here's another piece of roadside history here. Look at this. What do you think it was? You notice the little windows up here has uh, iron bars across the windows. Wonder if this was the um, his and hers jail cell. Again, I don't really know what the story is here, but you can see there was uh, a building here once upon a time. Some pretty cool rock walls. The road's going off multiple directions. Opportunities to explore on another day. Well, we're just about done with this ride now. Back in Tombstone. I still have to ride 10 miles back in to get to the Dragoon, to get to the van. Well, that about does it for me in this episode of Going Nowhere, the YouTube series that only has one episode in it so far. Maybe it'll become a thing. Maybe there will be more. But it seems like the day has been a great success considering we only went about 60 or 70 miles in 10 hours so it hasn't been a, a high speed high mileage kind of day it's been more of a, a meandering fun day exploring this part of southern arizona middle march road china peak i threw in a few ghost towns as a bonus you guys take care I'm going to get back on the road and get to the van. We'll see you in the next episode.